All right, Entree Architect community, 4 p.m. Eastern, which means it's time for the Entree Architect Context and Clarity Conversation for Friday, January 28th, 2022. This looks a little bit different than you've ever seen it before, but welcome. Thanks for joining us today. As you get here, say hi. Let us know that you're here and let us know where you're joining the conversation from. If we've never met before, my name is Jeff. I'm, I'm Jeff. Hi, I'm in Indianapolis. I'm joined by a bunch of friends today. We'll, we will uh, introduce everybody here in a moment, but introduce yourself. We do this every weekday afternoon at 4 p.m. Eastern for one reason, so that we can find clarity around the things that matter most to you, the architect. doesn't matter if you're the employee of a firm or you own your own firm. Maybe you circled a date on the calendar and said, 2022 is my year, and you're on the runway to starting your own thing. Or... Maybe you have owned your own firm for a year or 10 years or 27 years, and you're starting to rethink or maybe even reimagine what that firm could or maybe should be. All of the topics that we cover, one topic every day, they all fall under the broad umbrella of the business of architecture, and they're all the need-to-know topics for the success of small firm architects just like you. So welcome. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for saying hi today. Continue to uh, to say hi as you get here. Uh, it looks different today if you have joined us in the past because today is number one. It is our inaugural. It is the first ever Context and Clarity Book Club discussion. We're, we've been looking forward to this. We've been excited about this. And uh, we're going to discuss a book today called Atomic Habits by James Clear. So we will uh, we'll jump into that here in just a minute. I see Sarah Lee has joined us from Salt Lake City, Utah. She's the first in on my screen, which means that she is the winner of today's John Kenny Memorial Crocheted Bathtub Award. So congratulations, Sarah Lee. John Jones over in Connecticut says he's on the outside looking in. <laughs> he says he's not a good reader. That's okay. That's all right. You you know of the book. You're going to be able to respond to this conversation. And that's the key, right? We're going to have this conversation live on the screen and with you in the comments section. So glad to have you all with us. I see Tim Dearborn from Stockton, California. Chris has joined us from Massachusetts and uh, Jefferson from L.A. Hans from Portland, Maine. Who else? Diego's down there. Uh, he's joining us from U on YouTube from Nicaragua. Wendy's in Western Mass. And who else? Who have I missed? I'm pretty sure I missed somebody. Uh, if you are in the Entree Architect Community Facebook group right now and your comments are not showing up on screen, my suggestion is that you take a look at the URL. It's the bottom left of your screen right now. It's chat.restream.io slash FB as in Facebook. With a couple of clicks, you can give Facebook permission to allow your information to go out here to Restream, which is the platform that we use here that you see the six of us on right now. So uh, if you're not showing up or if you show up as Facebook user, uh, I haven't seen that in a while, but if you do happen to show up as Facebook user without your picture, uh, also go to chat.restream.io slash FB as in Facebook and uh, re re-up those permissions. Apparently you have to do that every six months. So it may have expired for you. Maybe uh, the new year brought a new challenge that is easily overcome at this point just by going to that URL. Uh, with that, uh, as everybody else is coming in, I see Elizabeth Carmichael. Hi, Elizabeth Car Carmichael. Welcome back. Happy Friday to you. Let's go around the room. We've got some guests on the screen. You don't you don't usually get this view, but we've invited members from our community that um, that wanted to be on screen, that have read the book and are, are uh, uh, I think they're ready to discuss. They're happy to discuss the book today. Um, they, they are with us here in the studio today as they speak. So as usual, I'm joined by my co-host, Catherine McPhail. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Jeff. You know, every time you say you're on the runway to start your own thing, I think you're going to say you're on the runway to stardom. And I think that sounds a little more exciting. Starting, I mean, I guess if you haven't started your own thing, that's exciting too. Anyway, I just, just thought that start? and I thought I'd tell you. Every time you say that, I think, you know, when you say you're on the runway to starting your own thing, but I think you're going to say stardom. You're on the runway oh, to stardom. stardom. Okay. Yes. All right. Which well, would be really I exciting could... for 2022, wouldn't it? Yeah, we can change that. You can be on the run with a stardom if you'd like. <laughs> I'd <laughs> rather do that, that, yeah. 
<laughs> that's you, you two right. have already From, arrived. I mean, we are, are on the runway to stardom, so maybe that's why. Well, this yeah. this is the 15 minutes right here. This mm-hmm. is Warhol's 15 minutes. All right. Well, yep. we'll, we'll have to change anyway, that. It's nice to see you again, Jeff. Good to see you, Catherine. Thanks for joining us. Um, also in the Boston area is Isra Banks. And, and so we talked before we went live that snow is apparently coming, but what are you calling it? It's a Bombo Genesis. Bombo Genesis. Bombo Genesis. Bombo Genesis. All right. So Isra is a special snow. It's a special snow. Yeah, I don't. (laughs) I don't think we have that in the Midwest. I don't know what that is. But Isra, welcome. Thanks for joining us from Boston. How are you today? All right, Isra is, uh, we can't hear Isra. She's muted. So we'll we'll work on that. And uh, from this, from the sticks of Vermont, we have Jay Caroli. Hi, Jay. Hi, Jeff. It's good to see you again. Great to have Great to see you again. Jay and Ezra were both, uh, they joined us backstage last night after our Context and Clarity Live conversation. Spoiler. I gave it away. Sorry. Spoiler oh, well. alert. Oh. oh, well, Jeff. I'll tear up my contract yeah. now. It's the, that's, a, that's a breach of contract, Jeff. I... <laughs> well, it's all over now. <laughs> our, our fellow Ready to last start, I'm just person. Ended has given the definition of bombogenesis. It's actually like a winter um, hurricane. Wow. Awesome. Oh. That, that sounds like okay. a really fun time. I was swearing that Catherine had made that up. I know. It sounds like a word I'd make up, but I did not make it up. I just enjoy it. Yeah, you know what? I uh, So here's, I'm going out on this limb. I think uh, Catherine and Chris are in cahoots and they're both making it up. So no. that's where I'm going yeah. with it. <laughs> well, you have to also. You can look it up later. Okay. Uh, also joining us from Ithaca, New York, Christian Nielsen Palacios. Welcome. Hi, Christian. Hi there. How are you guys? I'm doing well. How's how's Ithaca? Any Bombo Genesis headed your way? Not that I know of. We still have about 10 inches left from two or three days ago, but uh, I know we have a wind chill advisory for tomorrow, so it's going to be especially cold, but that's it. Wow. Okay. We have 10 flakes of snow here in Indianapolis. And um, Mark R. LePage, founder of Entree Architect, the community. Hello. The godfather. The, the, God, the godfather, godfather of like Entree that. Architect. Well, I'm getting old enough for that. There was a time where that wouldn't be appropriate. No snow here in Carolina. I left the snow behind in New York. I don't. I don't do yeah. that stuff anymore. Wise. Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, you're I'm, all welcome. Come miss down. <laughs> I don't miss it. <laughs> I don't miss it at all. <laughs> I'm sure not. My kids. I think do. it would be my, easy my to get used does. to it. Oh really? Yeah. Okay. Well, send send her. Well, I was going to say send her to Indianapolis, but we we have not. Um, we've had very very little snow this winter, which has been a little bit odd, but. So I'll send her up to uh, to Ithaca, or probably the sticks of Vermont has a lot of snow. Well, my oldest son is in Syracuse right now, and it was like five degrees this morning. So mm, good it's for him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, the um, as we said at the beginning, the opening here, and as we've been anticipating all month, this is our inaugural book club meeting for context and clarity. So again, if, you know, if you set a goal, if you said, Hey, I need to read more, um, that's, that's why we're doing this book club with context and clarity. What does that mean? It means that, uh, every month we will name a book at the beginning of the month, actually at the end of this session today, I'll tell you what next month's book, what February's book is. You'll have until the last Friday of February, and we'll do another one of these sessions where a bunch of us will join on screen and we'll talk about the February book. And we'll do that month after month. So if you need to read more, then uh, join us for the Context and Clarity Book Club, and you'll get 12 books uh, over the course of the year. There's no cost to this, right? It's just 
It's just our community getting together to read a book and discuss a book, hopefully learn from it and put something into action. And like I said, this month's book is Atomic Habits. I think it's a great place to uh, start out the year, Atomic Habits by James Clear. So uh, maybe just to throw out the uh, first question for those of you in the chat, as well as those of you on screen, uh, because we do want everybody uh, over in the wherever you are, Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitch or Twitter or YouTube, um, answer, answer the questions, join this conversation with us. So uh, maybe the first question for everybody out there is, what was your favorite of the Atomic Habits book? Anybody want to start out with their favorite part of the book? All right. <laughs> I, I, I found it kind of hard to remember the book. I don't know why. I have listened to Blinkist twice. I listened to the book twice. And um, yeah, it just goes right over. All it's because you're listening to it at six times speed. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so Chris had already jumped in and said that habit stacking was going to be his new go-to method. And right. I like the idea of habit stacking. The It's kind of an if-then statement, right? So... Mm -hmm. Where it's it's always also when if so when I do this I'm going to do this um, and it's just a key for things that that are already a natural habit but um, but you're adding on to that and it's it's a prompt it's a cue he calls them um, for that next thing that you're trying to add and you already do the one thing naturally add something to it I I, I agree with Chris I I thought that was great yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, and I, I think, right above Chris's comment there, I see Amanda Eden. Hi, Amanda. Great to have you join us today. She says she started habit stacking before she even knew it was a thing. So I, it, to me, I, I think that's one of the great things about the book is that um, there are a number of things in there that maybe it's just me, but I, they seem really natural. I didn't necessarily think of them don't necessarily do them, but as, as, um, I listened to the book. So as I was listening to, uh, to James clear talk about it, yeah, that, that seems really natural. That seems to really make sense to me. So I, I like, I like that aspect of it. Isra, I think I cut you off. I apologize. No, that's okay. I was going to say, um, env the env environmental design is like, that's kind of, pretty much touched with what we do when we design to other people. And um, it's, it's just highlights the importance of, like, like he tells the story of, of research, uh, of um, um, clinic manager, or a researcher, she wanted her, uh, the staff to eat better. And they just started by without even promoting it, without even saying anything, they started changing the uh, the uh, layout of the cafeteria and um, tracking the sales, they found that people were buying more wa water bottles than they used to just based on uh, the environmental. So uh, just simple tweaks in, in your environment can, can uh, promote. And then the other thing uh, is, uh, we probably did, Jay and Catherine and I discussed that earlier uh, was, um, the family and uh, uh, environmental behavior pressure, or probably we call it peer pressure or um, cultural conformance. Not that's not the right word. Um, so yeah, when when there are people, uh, yeah, cultural. He, he calls it cultural cultural issues when people are uh, behaving in in a certain way. That's uh, that's exactly uh, what we feel obligated to do to fit in. And I think that's a perfect example to what we do here in Montreal Architect. Uh, we keep each other accountable. Um, we, we just promote um, good spirit. And yeah, I think that's, that was like, hmm, yeah, that's, that's what my, art, my Montreal Architect friends are for. Yeah, your, your uh, built-in accountability partners. Mm -hmm. That's that's uh, yeah. It, I think that's good. Go ahead, Christian. Sorry. Yeah, I think uh, although the, I believe that's towards the end of the book, but the accountability partner thing is, I think, at least for me, 
going to be critical because uh, while I agree with Isra, I think I need a more formal arrangement for, for that because I read this book a year ago, so uh, I don't remember all the details, but obviously I have not increased my uh, productivity or anything by 1% every day because I would be extremely successful if I had. And uh, I need to remember and restart all the good ideas that I had when I read the book and actually make a habit out of those things. So he makes everything sound so like it makes so much sense that, that you said, yeah. think that any, anybody could have written this book, but uh, it's hard to put it into practice and, and to be consistent. Yeah. And along those lines, Tim Dearborn says a small incremental change to better ourselves can lead to bigger, bigger and better things. And, and um, I was going to, I, I use the Audible app, and so I, I bookmark on Audible a lot. I was I meant to uh, look this back up before we went live, but uh, James Clear uses that analogy, I guess, that one percent improvement every day uh, leads to to exponential growth, or you know, some some version of that, which is not his original thought. And he, at the beginning of the book, he talks about who actually uh, coined that. But um, I, I think that's, for me, that's a, one of the biggest, biggest ideas in there as well. Yeah, I think The Compound Effect is uh, another great book, by the way. Um, but but uh, that's really powerful that you, you know, the little tiny incremental improvements add up to huge uh, adjustments in your life if you just take one consistent step over time. Um, I mean, growing Entree Architect is exactly that, just sort of just starting, just starting, right? Just saying, okay, this is what I want to do. And I want to create that and, and start with one action. And that's actually one of the things that I wanted to, to mention uh, that I took away from the book is the, the concept of, of motion versus action, which is one of the things that I struggle with, that I am constantly, you know, I come up into this office at eight o'clock in the morning and I leave at six o'clock and I'm constantly doing something, right? But if I look at what I've done, half of it is probably motion, right? It's just me going through the process. It's not taking action. And when you take action, that's when things actually happen. Um, and that's really something that, that uh, was really powerful for me. Can you I, remind I, me I, what that is again? Sorry, Jay. The difference between motion and action was, was what Mark was saying. And I, right. I'm right there with him. I, I, um, I'm the beginning of the week I was reading, uh, 12 week year and he talks about, it, and I forget the, what he uses as, as the term for action, it, maybe, maybe action, but it's the same idea that, um, you know, we spend a lot of time looking like we're doing things and we are doing things, but it's really just a plan to do something and, and we're not actually. And once we, once we actually create that action, that's that 1%. Yeah. yeah he says that action is, um, results in an outcome. Right. That's okay. the difference I between think, uh, motion and action. So my to-do list to would that. be all motion, right? To-do lists are all motion. Okay. Right. I have a lot of those, though. I think he, he uh, kind of parallel to that, although I don't think they're perfect synonyms, but when he talks about goals and systems and that uh, winners and losers have the same goals. So what yeah. is different is the systems. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a very powerful statement. And um, how to design um, the way to um, what, where you want to be in terms of goals. So yeah, you set goals and then that the system and putting these together is, is a big key. And, Probably that's what personally I need to focus on. So I think Sarah Lee is saying that the, the impl implementation is, right. is, you know, so you can plan for all kinds of things, but until you implement them, uh, it's just a plan. Right. Planning is motion. Right. And, and architects are really 
probably it's probably a big piece of who we are, right? Because we were all dreamers. We like. I was, dream. I was thinking that, Mark. So, so if somebody comes to me and they say, "Hey, I want to build a house," well, I'm just the motion. I'm not the action, is it right? Yeah, right. That's true. but I have to create a bunch of actions. I think before they get to their ultimate action. Yeah, I I love to plan, right? I love to live in that future wonderful place that I want to go to. And I could spend my whole day there if I if someone lets me, right? If I'm not conscious mm -hmm. about it, and mm -hmm. so I have to be very, you know, t taking taking the action is hard for me. That's painful for me, right? And yes. I'd rather just sit and dream. But in order to reach the, to, in order to reach that dream, you actually have to take action. You actually have to put together a plan and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do, and th what's the next step? What's the mm -hmm. next action I have to take in order to get to where I want to go? Well, the, one, the thing Good. that um, a couple people have mentioned, the uh, Sarah Lee and Wendy both mentioned the two minute plan where you just do something for just two minutes. And that seems like, OK, I could do that for two minutes. Like I have to do my um, 1099s and I think I'm going to do it for two minutes. Well, actually, it's a little bit different because I'm just making myself start. But habits where you could just say, like, I'm going to stack these habits and just do each of them for two minutes instead of a half hour for each of them that you're planning. It seems I could do that. Seem, well, you know, anyway, and I, I think, you know, one of the things that I really enjoy about the book is the, the implementation part of it, you know, and, and I'm a very habit driven person. So once, once I start a habit, you know, I can, I can do that forever, theoretically. And um, so I'm going to get the Seinfeld reference in early in this conversation, but one of the examples that he, he uses is Jerry Seinfeld has his chain where he writes yeah. a, writes a joke every day. And in the book, he talks about the, um, the show on Netflix, the uh, documentary on Netflix called comedian. And if you haven't seen that, you need to watch it. <laughs> it's that Seinfeld thing. But, but in, in, in that documentary, Jerry, he has a paper calendar, right? Does anybody have remember what a paper calendar looks like? But he has a paper calendar, and every day he writes a joke, and he puts a red X. Yeah. And then the next day he writes a joke, and he puts a red X. And that that kind of thing, for whatever reason, that resonates with me a lot because it's like, oh, yeah, I don't want to break that chain. Um, so I, that, that to me uh, is pretty powerful. Chris and Sarah Lee both – are, have have uh, commented with some of the formulas that James Clear talks about in the book. And so one thing, and, and so thanks to both of you for, for posting those in the comments. One thing I would say is that um, in listening to the book, one of the things that you hear is the author will uh, refer to the website. I think it's atomichabits.com pretty easy to figure that out but atomic uh, atomic habits.com there are some downloadables with some of these formulas that chris and sarah lee uh, kind of fill in the blank type things uh tools that you can use that are that are sort of companions to this if you're if you're interested in that hey jeff uh, I, I have also another recommendation in reference to jerry seinfeld's chain um, for Perfect. people who don't who don't like calendars, paper calendars, uh, I have an app called Strides, which is the same concept. It's a goal setting app. You just basically say what goals do you want to set, how many times you want to, you know, accomplish that, um, and then every morning it's a notification. It says, did you did you do what you said you're going to do? And if you say yes, you click the button and it puts it, you know, puts it it turns it green, right? It turns the chain green. And when I go to the app, I can see all the green dots lined up and if i'm missing one like i missed one on my birthday because i didn't just didn't have time to to do the habit um it's it's blank right so now i have this big long chain and it also tracks streaks and so now my streak has to start over because it you know i had to start like the day after yeah so it's it's uh yeah like it's wordle or or what's a snapchat <laughs> snapchat's a big thing all the streaks with the kids they have to keep out yes. for that yeah. But if we could share our uh, Strides app and we could just see if everybody else is doing it or not, that yeah, kind of adds wonder, an accountability. I wonder if uh, you probably can. It probably does have a community aspect to it. Oh, well, that, that would be pretty cool. I, yeah, I so just showed is... my paper calendar 
which was a gift from a fellow Antre architect. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna use this to keep track of what I do every day. And for the first eight days of January, I was really good at it. Uh -huh. And then good. The, the bottom three rows are all blank. I forgot and I uh, stopped. Yeah. So that's the kind of uh, issue that I have is remaining focused and consistent on my trying to develop good habits. Well, you play Wordle every day, right, Christian? Yeah, yeah. So maybe you just cross it off after Wordle. <laughs> Sounds like a good idea. Use your mastermind group. Use yeah. the Slack group in mastermind. Yeah. Commit to it in your mastermind group. Say this is I'm going to do this every day and I'm going to I'm going to check in every day and then every day post it in your mastermind channel. Yeah, that's okay. that's a good point. And you earlier you Christian you mentioned accountability partner and I I talk about that sometimes. I have a an accountability partner have had for a, a couple of years now, I guess. Um, and it's, again, I think some of these things, you know, they work with your personality. They may not work with your personality, et cetera. But I, I think that's, uh, I'm as big on that as I am on, on mastermind. So, uh, if anybody is wondering about that, I would definitely recommend it. Uh, Manuel says, uh, I always seem to have a hard time starting an action, but I noticed that if I have an action that I am supposed to perform and I start it the act of starting it helps me to accomplish the action until I started. Yes. It's just movement or planning starting. It's hard for me. I, 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 I think body in motion, right? Yeah. 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 Is this, is this the book where he talks about putting the, the running shoes on Yes. in order to take the run? Cause I couldn't remember whether, whether it was this book. Cause I read this book a while ago. Yeah. And actually I use that with my mom. My mom is 75 years old and she, and she wants to um, swim every day. But she doesn't, she doesn't, and she wants to turn it into a habit. And so I said, Mom, don't make swimming the goal. I said, Mom, putting your suit is the goal. Put on your swimsuit. Mm -hmm. And if you don't want to swim, take a swimsuit off. And, but as long as you put the swimsuit on, you've accomplished the goal. And she does that. And then once you have your swimsuit on, you might as well get in the pool, right? That's what happens. Right. This is as long as you have the swimsuit on, you, that's the hard part. And so I'm writing that down. <laughs> put, your sw put your swimsuit on, Jay. Just put your swimsuit on. <laughs> well, you I'm, riding bike, I'm riding bike shoes, but it... Yeah, it's the same thing. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You don't have to go for a ride. Just put your shoes on. That's it. Yeah. Sarah Lee says, remember another rule. It's okay to break the new habit once, but don't do it twice. Get back to it immediately. Get I... back to it the next day. I was thinking, I was trying to find uh, a way to deal with setbacks. And by setbacks, I mean probably curveballs or when, when unexpected things happen, especially as adults, probably as young people or teenagers, life is easier. But when, um, when we're at a certain age with a family, sometimes there are setbacks and how to recover from these setbacks and stay on on track i don't think he discussed that in the book well he kind of does a little bit with the two minute thing that would be a way to get yourself going again with that habit you were doing right do one push-up yeah which sounds fine i could do that yeah. then you have to do two yeah, i guess yeah I mean, it's restarting at that point i guess true but yeah, I mean, I, I, the the whole idea of atomic habits, you know, being the smallest, the the smallest increment, I suppose. Uh, you didn't go down to quarks or anything like that, but um, that that really that really resonates as well as you know, do do the one small thing and then add the next small thing and the next small thing and the next small thing. Is that physics um, or chemistry? <laughs> um, <laughs> Physics, maybe. <laughs> so I, I, I struggle with that because when I was in high school, one of my favorite classes, um, it was a AP class, I suppose, but it was Kim Fizz. So we, it, and it was a two year long class. Yeah. And so we, we, you would split it chemistry and physics, but it all blended together. So now I have tr 
pull, <laughs> yeah. pulling, <laughs> so pulling the two apart. You don't know I, which I don't one know. It was all the same <laughs> class. Yeah. So we could all agree in the room to 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 say that it's art, and then Mark would eventually say, "Oh yeah, that's right. It's art." Is is that this book? Is this is, is that the right book? Am I? No, I don't think that's a book. It's not that book. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm... <laughs> It's Friday afternoon. I might get off tangent. You, you, you might not invite me next Friday. I mean, is it? Maybe but, I'm wrong about that. I don't. I don't think it is. I don't. I don't. Think I don't have it in front of me. Well, we were talking about that last night, but right. But I thought. I thought. It, I thought. A, a, um, some portion of that came up in this book. That if that there's. Um, and maybe it was in the family and friends habits portion, chapter nine. Maybe somebody can look it up um, where he talks about, you know, you get into these agreements with with other people. And and we could all convince Mark that that quarks are an art topic, not a yeah, physics. Or a, right. I, you, maybe I'm in the wrong book. I'm I'm I am a reader, talking about which is. Another yeah, topic yeah. in the book that he's he, he encourages people to just you know be who you want to be and say it and say okay I am a reader yeah. and for years I wasn't a reader um, and now I can read three books a week and um, read. Yeah, I yeah. I think that uh, what what you're talking about I think was when they were talking about the um, um, the study where they someone went in the room and they had a bunch of actors yes and they would they would start asking questions you know people would answer and, and the actors would answer as expected and the and the test subject would answer as expected and then all of a sudden things would change and the actors would answer contrary to what was expected and the and the test subject would be a little bit confused, but would eventually, depending on the number of other actors in the room, would eventually go along with it. So I, we would all agree that, that one plus one is three. And eventually Mark would go, yeah, yep. yeah, it's three. And eventually Mark would, <laughs> would be, <laughs> believe that one plus one is three. Let's try that. It probably wouldn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> Are you questioning yourself already, Mark? It's like, is it? <laughs> Wait, Jay know. said it's three. Okay. Well, I was wrong. I guess it is in the People book. People say. Like, and I don't remember it. I Matthew, I, in the it, comments, it say me. that it's the line length study. Yes. He says Jay yep. is right. Okay. Peter exactly. mentions that in the Sorry, book. Jay. Very you good. were right. Well, Catherine, the truth is we've all conspired together to tell you that it's in the book, and it's right. not. It's not really in the book. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I don't Matthew remember it, but got, you say so. That got very meta very quick. <laughs> Sarah, so Sarah Lee says the, uh, the four laws of behavior change. Number one is cue, make it obvious. Number two, craving, make it attractive. Number three, response, make it easy. Number four, reward make it satisfying that that's almost the outline of the book there you know yeah. the, the concepts in order there so mm -hmm. we, we've talked about your favorite parts of the book do you have a least favorite part or maybe most challenging part of the book might be a different way to look at it do you have a least favorite um part of the book well, I, I didn't like when he said if you eat a pizza every night that's not going to be good I thought that was that wasn't necessary. That, to point out that hit too close to home, or what? <laughs> well, I mean, it's like the inverse of you do a little bit, like one percent will add up over time, right? It's the same thing with like every night you have ice cream, or every night you have pizza, or every day you have like a bunch of fun size Snickers. It's okay that day, but you can't do it every day, and that's bad news. He didn't say anything about ice cream, for the record. He said be about the pizza, like a family sized pizza every day. Yeah. No ice cream though. He didn't ice say cream's I was okay. just I was extrapolating into my own life, if that's the right word. <laughs> so so that that was your least favorite, okay. Yeah, because yeah, just remembering like bad habits add up too is like kind of 
makes you face the fact that it makes a difference. You could just say, oh, that doesn't matter. I did that thing this day, but it does matter in the end. We do it every day. But uh, I think that is a valuable part of this book too, is he, he talks about good habits and bad habits and, you know, ways to break bad habits because that's, that's important too. I mean, some of us might have uh, some bad habits and, you know, okay, well, you basically, you, you flip it on its head, right? You do the opposite of the, um, you make it, let's see, go back to Cyril's. You, you make it uh, unsatisfying. <laughs> um, unattractive. Make it hard. Maybe you're not attra- yeah, make you're it hide attractive. It. Hide it. Yep. You like take so, the batteries out of the remote and unplug the TV so that you don't yeah. just mindlessly turn it on. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. that's a good part. I know I just asked about the least favorite part, but hmm. yeah, I cannot think of any least favorite. But uh, I think uh, one example that he mentioned that caught my eye uh, a year ago, and that I think maybe applies to a lot of what we do, is that example of the photography professor who divided his uh, students into two halves. And uh, one half was uh, the quantity group and the other one was the quality group. And he said that if you're in the quantity group and you submit 100 photos, you get an A. If you submit 90, you get a B, whatever. And if you're in the quality group, uh, you only have to submit one photo, but it has to be really good. And uh, that he discovered or or proved, I forget, uh, that the best photos came from the quantity group just because they kept at it and they kept practicing and they kept doing it. And I think that sometimes our uh, pursuit of perfection in our design uh, doesn't help us. Mm -hmm. But But 100 sketches are a great way to, to, to suss out a great design. And not just, not just, go right to what you think the answer is and then try and figure out how to make that the best design, but, but sketch it a hundred times and overlay and overlay and overlay. Um, yeah, that's you what I took away from that. I thought it was great. Yeah. Actual paper. <laughs> no, 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 not actual paper. <laughs> that's the sketch that's table the... behind me. You and can yeah, still buy actual that, paper. <laughs> you know, paper um, comes it's, from trees. You, I think they're going to start making it out of bamboo. I have some around here somewhere. <laughs> that sounds like a Vermont thing what's, to me. What's an NFT? I don't even know. <laughs> there you go. Christian's got his. Okay, there's. Yes, all right. Ye- yellow trace or white trace? Jay, or, I, uh, I, I do yellow. white. Okay. I do white when it's paper. I do a, um, a combination of white, canary, and yellow on Morfolio. How do you do a combination mm. of white, yellow, and canary? Because I'm overlaying a hundred times, so I oh, use right. different so colors at different times time. depending on what I'm doing. Okay, well, sometimes Just... throw a little black one in there because then it makes a nice like Neko wafer black, you know, like that gray of Neko wafers. If you guys know what I mean. A black wow. trace. Yeah, you can make Where? it. Bl- you can make it black in Morfolio. I always do that. Like when I'm writing notes to myself and I want my life to be more exciting, I use the black. Just change Jay's <laughs> life forever. <laughs> and I'm going to yeah. use a white pen. Yeah. Yeah, you could use white pen or gray pen, yellow, pink, red, blue. They all look great on their black. That's Eric Reinhold does his videos. He does it um, white on black. It's really exciting. I don't think you can trace with the black, but you can put the black in the back and then it makes it gray. Oh, white. That's all. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, it's not black trace. I don't know how to. I don't know where my iPad is, so I can't even look it up right now. I just, I just wanted Jay to have a little more fun. That's all. Yeah, I don't have enough fun. I know. Jay Jay needs to have more fun. This is true. Um, I I guess I should say yeah. I realize I now I, that suddenly we're having, three quarters of the way through an hour. What's, What's that? It's the J way. Having fun. J way. It's the J way. There you go. It's the J way. Um, speaking uh, of that, I thought I thought we could have a little tagline. We read the book, so you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So let, let me ask this question. Well, first of all, let me, for those of you that have joined us in the last 45 minutes, hi, welcome. Thanks for hi. joining us. You found the Entree Architect Context and Clarity Conversation. Uh, this is our inaugural. It's our first ever Context and Clarity Book Club meeting. We're starting this for 2022. This month, we have read Atomic Habits. That's what we're talking about now. 
Uh, in just a few minutes, I'll tell you the book that we're going to read for February. And we're going to do this every month. So over the course of the year, uh, you can do your math. You can look at your calendar and figure this out on your own. But we're going to read 12 books or, or <laughs> listen to 12 books over the uh, course of the year and talk about them. Uh, last Friday of the month is the the goal for the book club conversation. I realize when we get to probably November and December, we may need to change that a little bit because of holidays or such. But uh, but that's that's what we're doing here. Um, so if you've joined us and you haven't said hi yet, if you joined us in on Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or Twitch or LinkedIn, um, say hi if you haven't. Just let us know that you're here and let us know where you're joining the conversation from. It's always fun to see where everybody is. Again, we're talking about Atomic Habits by James Clear today. Um, so, so Catherine wants to use the tagline, we read the book so you don't have to. But this morning no, on Clubhouse, Catherine... Yeah, you, I know you hosted yeah. you hosted uh, our clubhouse coffee talk this morning. So thank you for doing that. First of all, um, mm -hmm. what was the question you asked on clubhouse this morning? Why do we read? Why do we read? And there. That's it. That was a question. That was a question. And what kind of answers did? Uh, well, did I, I said there are maybe three reasons you read to get information or you read for pleasure, which is um, appreciating the art of the literature, the words and the characters, storyline, all the rest of that. And, and then other people added that they get, um, you know, philo philosophical uh, input or whatever, however you would put that. And hmm. also, what was that? What was the other one that people said? Oh, learning something. That was information. Mm -hmm. Anyone else remember what other people said? Anyway. Inspiration. Did you say that? Inspiration. Yeah, inspiration. Yeah, from like different spiritual books and things. And anyway, I was just wondering if I'm the only one who just is trying to get the information out of business books because Jeff likes to savor them. And I just can appreciate that we are different types of people. And Jeff was saying <laughs> a couple things about me just getting through it. <clears throat> and so my... Well, question was doesn't everybody just want to get through the business books i mean oh there's another reason that, that it was your homework that you had to do it so that's honestly why i read some of these books but i do get something out of it but i'm doing it just to get the information so i don't take my time reading them but i do take my time listening to fiction i would not speed that up well i would if the person was really slow i'd have to just because they're irritatingly slow so i knew catherine was going that here with with this and and I don't see Atomic Habits as a business book. Mm, okay. All right. All right. A business book. Maybe it's just that's too specific. Nonfiction. Uh, Nonfiction. Non but not nonfiction like information. It's like, what do you even call it? It's not history. So that's nonfiction, right? But it's, it's like more like. Is it self-help? Is it self-help? Is it self-help? Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. No. Now, I do love a good self-help book. But I listen to it fast because I don't have that kind of time <laughs> to spend on my own improvement. I got a lot of books to read. She got to go. <laughs> I got to go, yeah. Did you hear us how fast she said that? I got a lot of books to read. <laughs> she almost said that at like 1.75. Exactly. Maybe that's, no, that's the way I wish everyone 1.75 is too slow for her, I think. No. It depends. It depends on who's talking. But Mike McCallowitz, I listen to him at two times speed, so. He thinks he's fast talking. And he, he's not and that he fast. talks at two times speed. He's so a Jersey guy, yeah. He's to it at four times speed. Yeah. 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 We, but we also, will, a lot of these books repeat themselves. They don't exactly have a lot of extra information in between the little bits of information, I've noticed. I love business Say books because they, they... Go ahead. Say it again. I'm just saying that I sometimes think there's a lot of filler in between. Yeah, it's oh. sometimes. Some books... Some, some books business have a books lot of filler. Definitely have filler. Those are not the good ones. The, the, yeah. the, the, I love business books because they take me right back to that dream state. Because as I'm reading it, I'm imagining, oh, I can do that. I can live in that world. I'm going to go there. Right. And so that's why I like them. I like living mm. in that world. And so when I'm reading a business book, it inspires me to think about what that future could look like. That's true. Those are the good ones, though, Mark. Yeah, the good ones. You know what? I also have a rule. If, if, if I'm reading a book that I think is a waste of time, I stop. I don't have enough time in my life to waste the amount of time that it takes to read a book on a book that I think is fluff and not worth reading. Yeah. Unless you're interviewing them the next. Unless week. you're interviewing them. The next. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's true. But even then, I might just go find some notes somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will tell you that someone gave me a book recommendation. Um, I, I think probably most people on here have heard me say that I, I listen to books. I don't read them. Um, I was driving to Atlanta. And so I had time to listen, to, lots of time to listen to a book. And I, oh, you know, so-and-so recommended this book. So I put it on. I started listening. I got into it. I'm like, this this has got to get better. And and I, this, surely the next chapter is going to get, you know, and so on and so on. And I got down, I got to a traffic jam just north of Chattanooga, Tennessee, where we got rerouted off of the interstate and got to the last chapter of the book. And, you know, there's sort of the summary of the entire book. And I actually got angry. <laughs> you wasted your time <laughs> because you could have read something I thought else. You could have summarized this, or, or just that <gasps> that summary could have been the entire book. But I I wasted all the time from Indianapolis to Chattanooga, Tennessee, and whatever backwoods haunt I was in as we were being you know detoured around. And um, at that moment, I realized that the thing could have been about yep. five minutes long grand cardone's and 10x rule <laughs> that's exactly the book i'm talking about Is it? <laughs> oh, that's so funny because i that's so funny because i guess we're not I, gonna I, read that one i did not know that that's what you were talking that's about funny. it's just i had no. the same thing but i stopped i read about two chapters and and basically the premise of the book is work 10 at 10 times harder and he said oh, it yeah. 50 different ways to work 10 times harder. It was yeah. such a waste He's, of time. He said it over and over right. in different ways for a grand total of about eight hours. <laughs> that yeah. is exactly the, the book same I was thing, talking about. Over and over again. Work yeah. 10 times harder. And but you'll have but 10 Jeff, times now you've got time. Blinkist. And oh, yeah. You now have, that I have Blinkist. So that's, that's my... Uh, that, that's my... Some, some of you have heard me say this as well, but that that's my new uh, my new tool because when someone recommends something, or I or I see one of those Instagram posts where uh, we were talking about this last night, um, uh, Elon Musk recommends everybody should read these seven books or something. Well, that's pretty interesting. And so I take those seven books and I go to Blinkist and Blinkist summarizes. They they create blinks is what they say. So the the um, uh, major ideas, I guess, the big ideas of the book. And so I'll go through in Blinkist and listen, you know, maybe it's 15 minutes to listen to the big ideas of the book. And then I decide whether or not See if it's worth I want to actually listen. Yeah. yeah. So there, then, there will be no more Grant Cardone. Why, why would you <laughs> want to listen to the book after you got the content from Blinkist though? That's what I just downloaded Blinkist also. And why? Go ahead. Why? And Catherine's I do never that? reading a book again. Never going to read another book again. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. This is where that conversation started last night. It, it's why do you right. read? Yeah, that's yeah. true. I, I, I have said this before, books. but uh, I think uh, Jeff is probably one of the most well read persons I know, and he's always recommending and quoting books. So I personally am looking forward to the day that somebody quotes you. So yeah, Chris get is started. For your book, yeah, I, I want you uh, to write a book, and and Mark and gotta, Catherine and Israel my, and Jay on, on my bucket list. No book for me. Yeah. I'm just going to read other people's books. No, she's That's not. Um, she's going to blink other people's books. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, I've got she a just, lot of books. She I mean, just I canceled her Audible subscription and, and signed up it. for the Blinkist. Just the Blinkist Pro. lady. No, I got my profit first. <laughs> I've got um, your your bad ass and. A lot of self-help books around here. <laughs> well, Christian, hopefully, uh, hopefully, sometime soon. And then yeah, you I'll know what? How about how about that'll be our it. first book in 2024? Jeff would be your new book. Jeff Eccles wrote a book about 2024. Wow, that gives me a lot of time to procrastinate. 23, 23. Yeah. Well, 24 just seems a little more realistic because he's yeah, going to have to get a publisher and an agent and everything else. Well, there was the story. November. Yeah, exactly. There, there's a story in Atomic Habits um, 
the author of the Hunchback of Notre Dame, Notre Dame. What's uh, right. uh, who's who's the author? Vic, Victor Hugo. Victor Victor Hugo. So in Atomic Habits, he he tells that story of Victor Hugo had put off. You know, his publisher was expecting a, a book. You know, gave him a year or something. He mm. missed the deadline or something like that. And so, what Victor Hugo ended up doing was he he gave his assistant all of his clothes. Yeah, I that's think. right. The he only was just wearing a blanket or something. He couldn't go out anymore. <laughs> he couldn't go out because he was entertaining and he was doing all these things. He wasn't writing, so he basically got rid of all of his clothes. So he couldn't go out, and that forced him to write uh, in six months. And it was published. It was early. It was faster, right? Yeah, 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 it was faster. He probably wanted to go out again. Sure. Maybe he was just cold. I don't know. He was (laughs) motivated. He was motivated. I don't remember exactly the, uh, the, you know, there's a lesson there. There's a a lesson. That was the make it hard. Yeah, that was the make it it hard to be. Yes, that's that's exactly right. To do your bad habit. Yeah. Yep. You're right. You're right. Yeah. So Although it sounds like he's the kind of guy who would have gone out of town in a blanket. Right? Would that really have stopped <laughs> him? I don't know. Maybe Apparently, it did. Days. Yeah, it did. You know, so oh, that was so. that was an interesting part of the book. That um, was he. No, so somebody bought a, a red robe, a beautiful red robe, and then they had to redo their kitchen, and they had to redo their bathroom, and they had to buy all new clothes, and so it, it may have brought us around to the stack effect. I don't. I feel like that we read was, different books, Jay. I don't remember that at all either. No, that that was the um, that was the Renaissance artist whose daughter was getting married, right? right. And um, and he Catherine, couldn't afford it. Not this and Catherine. Catherine from R- Russia. Uh, Catherine the Great. The Great, Ca- I think, Catherine. gave him a, a thousand, whatever, which was worth a yep. hundred and fifty thousand in today's money. Mm-hmm. And it, and it was, he was talking about the habit that, um, just that habit that, you know, if I, if I paint this wall, then the wall next to it looks dirty and I have to paint that wall. And then I have the to paint the next effect. wall. And then I need a new, the Diderot effect. That's it. Good job, just, Chris. Chris read the book. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm impressed. There, there's, a, there's a lot of folks that, uh, that. Or either looking things up very quickly, or they've uh, they have a good I recall li- of of the book. I liked Chris's picture there. He just seemed really serious next to Diderot effect. Somehow that looked um, that's like it was name. illustrating. His new name is Diderot. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Struck me. That, that's that's uh, serious, Chris. <laughs> yeah, that's serious. <laughs> As Chris. opposed to to independent George. Oops. I Sorry. <laughs> it's another Seinfeld. Reference two yeah. in one, one <laughs> sitting. Hey, it's a limit. <laughs> but yeah, you in, just in my head, the they don't ever stop. It's just I, how, I know, you know how they don't. The it's filter. amazing. I think yeah, I'm going to have to just to get a little closer to you, Jeff. I'm going to have to rewatch all the Seinfeld shows so we can. You're on Netflix. I can get on your really? wavelength. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> yeah. Maybe I'll stop that with riding at one my point, bike. I, yeah, yeah. You ride your bike to power the Netflix. At one point, I had every Seinfeld episode recorded on VHS. So, what'd you do with it? Fun fact: you Remember that for next it, year's though, holiday yeah. party. There, there, a good, yeah, there you a go. Good trivia question trivia. for next year. I like party. that picture. Chris doesn't like his profile picture, but I can't really even see any detail not to like it. I just like the colors in there. Oh, see, I started binge watching Seinfeld in order to be a worthy member of Andre Architects. <laughs> There I'm you in, go. I'm in uh, season three right now. But it is in the I, owner's manual. I don't know if you <laughs> yeah, read it. I'm wondering if that's one of the things that I have it's to do in the rule book. In yeah, order to the rule acquire book. a better uh, habit. <laughs> you might have to. Uh, you might have to give that up. Yeah, that, that'll take a lot of time, which is what, nine, nine seasons, I, I believe? Good habit. Yeah, Sarah Lee wants us to cut oh, to the chase oh, and tell her what the new book good is. Good question. Yeah, there's, there, I was waiting for someone to ask that so ah. any, any last thoughts yes any i have an idea thoughts? how about you, you give the new title in charades jeff you have to act it out we all have to guess what it is 
right. Sing it. Sing it out of tune. Well, before we it before we go, did we miss tune, did we miss Mark's birthday? And is the whole choir uh -oh. here? No, the whole choir is not here. <laughs> no, no, no. That would be the, dangerous. The choir's in quarantine. <laughs> Thank you for the thought, Jay. Happy birthday. Thank Do you. Happy birthday, Mark. Do you. Thank you. Dear Mark. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> What's the next book, Jeff? The next book. So Sounds first of all, thank you all for uh, for joining us for this and reading the book. The the book for February <laughs> book? for the Sounds context like. and clarity so, book club. <laughs> has it been made into a movie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. It, well, no. it has not been made into a movie. However, the author of the book is prolific on YouTube, on Masterclass. Um, mm -hmm. Well, I guess probably the videos on their website are, are the, probably the ones on, on YouTube. Give clues and let us guess. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's a book about negotiation. Oh. Okay. Well, you already knew what it was, Jay, yeah. so I don't know. Yeah, what well, I didn't remember. Jay and I. <laughs> <laughs> so any, anybody... Anybody that, um, okay, the first person in the comments section. Yep, first got it. There, already. We, there we go. I, Never I split even, the diff. Finish that. Never split the diff. Rhymes Never split with the difference lost. from, yeah, reminds, r rhymes with the north side of a tree. Um, floss. Chris Foss. Chris Bowes. <laughs> Chris Voss. 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 Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing doing speech to or text Chris, there? Or Chris <laughs> Bose. We can read. I'll try to win the bathtub. We can we can read Chris yeah. Bowe's version. <laughs> that, no, I have That's a very that rare one. version. <laughs> it is it is a rare Never version. So, yep, yeah, Chris Voss is a former head hostage <laughs> negotiator for the FBI. He yeah, wrote a book called Never Split, Never the, Split the Difference, and it is, it is I think, I think just like I think. <laughs> Never split the atomic habit. I think that's good. Um, I think atomic <laughs> habits is a great read. I think it's a great way to start out Leave the year. The I think all of you need to read Never Split the Difference. Uh, yeah, one of my goals for 2022 is essentially to channel Chris Voss as much as I possibly can because I think it is helpful. Uh, definitely in negotiation. I'm I'm not planning on negotiating for hostages at all, but um, I think, I think it could, is though. also uh, maybe might become a habit, uh, not a habit. A habit, you can a hobby. That habit. <laughs> hobby. Uh, but I, I think it also really helps clarify communications. Uh, I think if you really uh, embrace and understand what he says and. And um, you'll you'll have to read the book, but I think it will really clarify your communication as well. So, never split the difference by Chris Voss is the book, and what's the date? February twenty fifth. February twenty fifth. Thank you. February twenty fifth. We will discuss never split the difference. Friday, February twenty fifth. So that sometimes, is the book. Sometimes split the difference. Never, never split, split the difference. Occasionally, Never. that's the other. That's the runner. That's, that's, <laughs> that's Catherine's next one. Next one in the series. Okay, just sequel. this time we'll split the difference. <laughs> the, <laughs> that's maybe my this sequel. The uh, hobby and habit. The, it's Hobbit. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's when the brain's running out of energy. There, it's a, hobby. <laughs> a lot of meetings today. <laughs> he, 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 he figured it out. He caught. He broke the code there. Uh, very good. <laughs> Manuel, we'll, we're going to send you a uh, special crocheted bathtub just for that, <laughs> for cracking going. the code there. Yep. All right. With that, everybody, uh, this has been fun. I, I hope everybody enjoyed this as much as I did. It's it's fun. Are we giving I thumbs up or down for the book? Okay. Oh. Yeah, good good question. Oh. Thumbs up or thumbs down for I'm the book? I'm going to go and thumbs up. I, say yeah. Yeah. Catherine, yeah. even yes. though she's not into... <laughs> Just because I'm not, just because I don't listen to them slowly doesn't mean I don't get anything out of them, except for I forget half of it, obviously. 
Okay. I don't know what I'm trying uh, to say. Also, I, I liked also, it, though. Uh, it has a lot of good advice. Yeah, I think it's very good. Um, anybody on Facebook as well, give the uh, if you can figure out how to do this on Facebook, give us the emoji, thumbs up or thumbs down in the comments here uh, as we wrap this up. And uh, thanks. Thank you to all of you for uh, Diego. Thanks for the uh, thumbs up on the YouTube side. Thank you for that. Um, thanks for reading the book. Uh, my encouragement to all of you is to try to uh, put as much of this into action as possible. Jefferson's got a, got a, a different uh, <laughs> thumbs up. and an... <laughs> It's Friday night. He started early. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure if that's a thumbs up or if he's, if he's holding on to the stein. But, um... Chris, that's not a troll. That's Diego. <laughs> but that would be funny yes. if the troll gave it. <laughs> yeah, that's Diego. That would be Diego, funny. you should put your name and picture on there so we can see you. <laughs> um, but uh, now that I know yeah. that Diego's in Nicaragua, I want to go visit. Yeah. Okay, yeah. he's gonna. You can drop a hint, Jay. That was you. that was it. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't get much more subtle than that, Catherine. Um, <laughs> yeah, this is a draft in the group later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, subtle, subtle hint there. Well, thanks everybody. Um, thanks for doing this with us. Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, to the rest of these book club meetings, conversations, discussions. Uh, like I said, this is. One of the reasons I wanted to do this is I set a goal. I think it was 2019 because I I had not, um, like you know Jay was saying he he was not a reader. I had not read anything in a long time, other than maybe some articles and things like that. And so for some reason, I set a goal of tw in 2019 to read 12 books, one one a month, and um, that was the best goal I ever met, and and just blew it out of the water. I was about 30 by the end of the year. Um, and that that's really that's really been kind of life changing and game changing. So hopefully you'll come along this journey with us and uh, participate and read "Never Split the Difference" by Chris Voss in February. We'll discuss it Friday, February twenty fifth. It's almost February, by the way. And um, oof. yeah, oof, almost February. Oof, I don't know how bad. Twelve done with twenty two. Yep. A third of the way through the first quarter at this goes, point. <laughs> goes fast. Don't blink. <laughs> we, can, we can make it hurt even more. Um, so thanks. Thanks to all of you. Appreciate all of you. Uh, of course, next week we will have a brand new Context and Clarity live guest. It will be Jesse Cole, who is the owner of the Savannah Bananas, a minor league baseball this team. going to be awesome. He's the author of Find Your Yellow Tux. He has a new book coming out in, I think it's release date is May. Um, it, it, you may be going, what? Owner of a minor league baseball team? Look up Jesse Cole. Look um, him up. Find an, find an interview. Uh, read we his book if you want. We will. It's, this is going to be a really great conversation. I will post tomorrow morning in the Entree Architect Community Facebook group about this and ask you as always, what do you want to talk about next week? Um, so look for that post tomorrow. We'll have a whole new round, a whole new group of topics for the week. Obviously talking to Jesse Cole on Thursday for Context and Clarity Live. So if, if you're not in that Facebook group, if you've just if you're just now finding this and experiencing this, we'll be back here Thursday uh, at 4 p.m. Eastern with that interview with, with uh, Jesse Cole. And then uh, Friday will be another mystery member spotlight inside the Entree Architect Community Facebook group. So I'm looking forward to another great week of Context and Clarity with all of you. I appreciate all of you making Context and Clarity a thing because now we get to talk about books. <laughs> now we get to read books and talk about books uh, amongst everything else that we do. So thanks for that. Please, all of you, take care of yourself. Be well, be safe. Uh, keep those around you safe and well. Take a little bit of time to breathe this weekend and relax. Find a way to get rejuvenated because we're going to do it all over again next week. So until then, uh, wherever you are in the world, uh, have a great afternoon, a great evening, a great night, a great weekend. I appreciate all of you and I uh, hope that I'll see you somewhere sometime soon. So thanks, thanks everybody. Dad. See you Monday. Bye, all. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.